Do you hate your guitar? Like you bought it and you liked it, but now you hate it and you don't know why. Uh, your guitar is filthy, my dude. Smell your hands after touching your strings. It smells like straight up corn chips. Scratch your fingernail on one of your frets. It'll be grimy and oxidized. It should be slick and smooth as glass. Your fretboard is all dried out and covered with finger cheese. It should be rich and full of life and dairy free. At the bare minimum, at the very least, you definitely need to change your strings more often. I mean, yours could probably be inducted into a museum as a historical artifact from the Bush administration. Which Bush administration? My brother in Christ, you shouldn't have to ask. You need to show a little pride in your craft. Clean your weapons, soldier. I posted something like this while cleaning one of my guitars several weeks ago on Instagram. And a lot of people were like, okay, but how? And that is what I'm gonna show you today. I'm going to take you through my process of how I take a guitar from being an icky wooden box of suck and turn it into a shiny, sleek inspiration machine. Here's your shopping list. This video isn't sponsored by Music Nomad, but it should be. I've spent a lot of money on their stuff and a lot of the products I'm gonna talk about today are from them. You need a neck cradle, a guitar mat, a peg winder. I have used the really, really cheap Dunlop peg winders for like 20 years and I never really realized how spindly and wobbly they were until I started using the Music Nomad one. I mean, how complicated or bougie can a twisty turny thing be? But it's definitely a lot nicer than the cheap ones. And the little peg slot at the top is big enough for bass tuners. It's really stable, really sturdy, it's got some heft to it and it just works great. But the cheap ones from Dunlop or other companies, the little ones, they take up a little bit less space, so it's kind of up to you, I guess. And you should have some string cutters handy. The Music Nomad ones are fantastic. For the cleaning products, you're gonna need the Pro Strength Guitar Polish, the Frine Fret Polishing Kit, F1 Fretboard Conditioning Oil, the Guitar One Polish and Wax Spray, and the Guitar Detailer Spray for your matte and satin finish guitars. You'll also need some good old reliable finger ease, but not for the reason you might think. Or, and or, you could get Tune It, which is a little tube of stuff from Music Nomad for your nut. You should also get some of Music Nomad's String Fuel Lubricator and Cleaner or GHS Fast Fret, because they kind of do the same thing. You'll also want some soft dusting tools, and these are made by Music Nomad. You don't need anything this fancy or designed specifically for guitars as long as you're smart, but honestly, Music Nomad just has them ready to go and it's just easy. Just do that. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure you have enough microfiber cloths because you're gonna use one for a lot of different steps in this process. I use one for the guitar polish, the wax spray, the F1 fretboard oil, and one for general cleanup that I call Oscar because Oscar lives in the trash. And this particular microfiber is the one I use for, you know, cleaning up and a little oopsie boopsies. And, and just a little PSA here, please remember, that you can wash your microfiber cloths with just some soap and water, throw them in the laundry. And I'd recommend doing that kind of regularly too, especially with the cloths you use for the gunkier products like the guitar polish and the F1 oil. Years ago, I didn't really think about that. I just kind of used the oil cloth to apply the oil and I'd use a clean one to wipe it off. And then I just kind of left the oil cloth cause I'm like, I'm just gonna use more oil on it later. And it just lived in a toolbox with some other rags and it was pretty gross. But don't worry, I'm older now and wiser. I've seen the error of my ways. And not just with oil rags either. I mean, I used to wear this hat, unironically, all the time. So when you set up for this job, a workstation is a nice thing to have, but it's not required. It certainly contains the mess and makes it easier. I'm using the Music Nomad guitar mat and neck cradle. And while there are other cheaper options out there, these particular products have been very gentle on my fiddles. So for today's cleaning target, I'm going to clean one of my students' red Ibanez RG something rather. They don't print the model numbers on this particular guitar. I don't know why. All of these steps work for acoustic guitars as well as electric guitars. It's strings, it's tree flesh. Just follow the steps and you'll be fine. Though the sound of the guitar won't be as affected as the feel, if it feels and plays really well, your talent level is going to metaphorically go up a little bit which might actually encourage you to pick it up and practice, which will make your talent level literally go up a few notches. So let's get to work. Okay, first step, remove those ancient artifacts you call strings. The Golden Gate Bridge has fresher wires than my guy. Now you should dust your guitar thoroughly before you start cleaning it. Dust, after all, is like teeny tiny rocks. So dust will scratch your finish if you start using a cloth and rubbing it all around with cleaning products. 
You don't have to have a fancy tool for this, but the Music Nomad duster situation is pretty convenient. And it's got a whole bunch of different shapes for getting under the strings in various places should you need to do a quick dusting without removing the strings. The next part of the process is one of the most satisfying because you're gonna clean and polish the frets with the frying kit. The frying kit. That word just seems really made up. Probably is. It's probably an acronym. I could have looked that up. Could have looked that up. It's pretty easy to use. Just find the fret guard that most closely matches your fret size and apply a pea-sized drop of fluid on the included microfiber cloth. I'm usually able to use the same pea-sized amount on like three frets before I have to reapply any fluid. If you get a little bit of the solution on the fretboard, it's perfectly safe. Just get it off as soon as you can with Oscar the trash cloth. Now, I don't know what would happen if you don't wipe it off immediately, but it says to do that on the bottle and I'm not gonna argue with the plastic. Now, before I knew about the frying system, I would just use steel wool to clean my frets. And let me tell you, steel wool probably still has a place in the zeitgeist of guitar cleaning, but it sucks comparatively, okay? Also, steel wool will leave behind kind of like a shedding trail, and that little bit of like fibrous metal will sometimes get attracted to the magnetic poles of your pickups, which is like a stupid problem. Professionals use steel wool all the time, it's great. But for you and me, okay? Some self-awareness, we're gonna practice for a moment. You're probably not a professional luthier watching this video. I'm not a professional luthier. I just want my guitar to sound sick and I want it to feel awesome and I don't want it to suck. So this is what we're gonna use. My one critique is that the fret guards are pretty small and they don't work like that great. I mean, they're kind of flexible, which I get. It has to work on different radiuses. And sometimes that little like frying solution will sneak under the guard and it like doesn't work as good as it should. So what I did is I just stole a little idea that I saw from a dude on Instagram where you put a little bit of tape on the side of the guards. If I remembered who the dude was that I stole this idea from, I would totally give him credit, but I don't, I'm so sorry. I don't remember where I saw this. If it's you, you're a genius and I love you and thank you for your service. Next up, we're going to condition and deep clean the fretboard. Now the fretboard on this guitar was just I mean, it was awful. What you wanna do is grab a gift card or something, just a firm piece of plastic, and just kinda of gently scrape all that gunk right off of there. So this fretboard has a lot of like finger cheese on it, so I'm gonna use this Minchie's gift card to scrape it off. Not sponsored. This might not work. I might have to soften it first, but let's just see. Yeah, this'll be good. I'm gonna do a preliminary scrape. And then I'm gonna go back in with some oil. It's like going gold digging for the piece of wood that used to live there before you started living there with all your skin oil and your skin cells and your nastiness. Is that all? Yeah, these have nothing on. And once you get all that gunk scraped off, you can take a quarter sized amount of the F1 oil on a separate cloth and start just massaging that stuff right into that fretboard. Now, you wanna use the F1 oil or some kind of oil designed for this specific purpose. You do not want to use WD-40, okay? This is a musical instrument, not a squeaky cabinet door, okay? So use something designed for this purpose. I say that with love. I had a student once tell me he used WD-40 on his fretboard because he heard me say that I oiled my fretboard and I just, I didn't have the heart in the moment to tell him that that was not it, bro. And I just, man, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I didn't correct you in the moment, but you were trying your best and it had already been done. And so like nothing I could say would make it better. It would just make you feel bad. But now I, I think I would, be self-aware enough to say, hey man, like that's so good that you're taking care of your guitar and doing what you know to do and, and stuff. I just recommend the future though, like use an oil that's like meant for wood. WD-40 probably isn't gonna hurt anything. Maybe, <laughs> I just don't. Uh, how, help me. <laughs> Anyways, once you've applied that oil, should be good to go. It doesn't smell like much, so this is still not the best smelling part of this process. If there was ever a time for the vomit emoji, now would be the time. Go place it in the comments. So be pretty generous with the oil. If you feel like you need to use some more and it's not spreading around enough, too much isn't gonna hurt anything. 
it's just wasteful and kind of messy. And now you're just gonna let it marinate for about the length of an episode of Adventure Time. And then once it's all good and soaked in, just take a clean dry cloth and wipe off all of the excess. You may even wanna go over and apply a second coat of this if it started out feeling like a sandy piece of driftwood and it just needs that extra help, but it's probably good after one. Now, if you get any F1 oil somewhere you don't want, like your neck cradle or on your hardware, just slap it with Oscar to discipline it into obedience. If you're not a fan of Adventure Time, you can just use the 10 minutes that the oil soaking into your neck to do this next step, which is the guitar polish. With the guitar polish, you just apply a thin coat, kind of let it dry a little bit. I mean, we're talking like 20 seconds, and then you buff it off with a clean, dry part of the cloth or a separate cloth. The polish can clean the oxidization off of your hardware, but this is a huge but, okay? Big ol' butt. The polish is pretty strong. And if you have something like a Gretsch White Penguin, which has a lot of gold hardware on it, this polish will strip the gold right off of that hardware. So I would highly recommend not using the polish on any kind of plated, colored hardware. If it's just chrome, you're probably okay. Also, don't use the polish on a satin or matte finish guitar, okay? It's not designed for that. That's where you're gonna use the guitar detailer spray on all of your silky smooth satin babies. And I know what you're wondering, does the polish smell good? And yeah, it smells great, but it's not the best smelling part. But here, is a pretty good smelling part. Not the best smelling part, no sir. Don't confuse yourself into thinking this is the best smelling part. You're gonna spray a little bit of the Guitar One spritz on a brand new dry microfiber cloth, and you're gonna start just gently buffing that around on the gloss finish of the guitar. And you'll kind of go back over it with a dry part of the towel to sort of wipe it off. This is the part that will really add the shine and slickness to your finish if you've already used the guitar polish. Now there's an often overlooked step that's not really gonna apply to this particular Ibanez guitar, but it's something that I would do on pretty much any other guitar. You'll take Oscar the trash cloth and you will just kind of gently clean out the nut slots from all the metallic gunk and just stuff that gets kind of built up in that spot. You can also use some 600 to 1000 grit sandpaper just really lightly in that area to sort of smooth it out a little bit. You're not trying to reshape anything, you're just kind of doing a smooth once over. Then add a thin layer of Tunit from Music Nomad or, or spray a little spritz of finger ease, right? Didn't see that coming. My old guitar tech back in Texas taught me that trick and it's amazing. It works really well for giving your guitar a little bit of added tuning stability. So whether it's finger ease or tune it or whatever, just do something. And now you're gonna put on a fresh set of strings. And this is a very crucial step. You're going to clean these strings. What? Clean brand new strings? What? What? Yeah, you're gonna clean them because new strings are covered with a tiny bit of schmoo from the manufacturing process. Don't believe me? Take a white t-shirt and rub your strings with it and you will definitely see skid marks. Coated strings are typically a little bit better about this, but that's kind of a given. So, string fuel. This spongy boy is already impregnated with the solution for cleaning your strings and it does an amazing job. Just wipe it one or two times up the fretboard and then bam, flip top like a magician has the cloth used to wipe off the excess right inside of its blue body. And this, my fine, wonderful viewers, is the best smelling part of the process. I love how this stuff smells and it makes my guitar a delight to play. So now you know how to clean a guitar the right way. I hope you liked it, I hope you learned something useful. If you did, there's some buttons down there that you can click on. There's one for subscribing, there's one for the liking, there's a little bell you can click on. You should absolutely click it, but it doesn't make any noise. They should change that. Hit me up on Instagram if you have any questions about my music or my teaching. I released new music last year. I'm releasing new music this year. Hopefully, at some point, <laughs> enjoy, and I will see you next time. Go get to cleaning.